Hi, and welcome to Rev. Collins Reflections in Wingham United Church. This service has been prepared for December 13th, 2020, the third Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season of preparation and reflection. As the season of Lent prepares us for Christ's death at Easter, Advent prepares us for his birth at Christmas. Both are seasons when we are encouraged to reflect on what these two high holy days mean for us as Christians. They're meant to be times of looking inward with honesty, integrity, and a deepening awareness of what Jesus is about to do he did for us. Not just for creation, but for me and you as individuals. For this reason, the color purple, uh, which is the liturgical color for Lent, is often used for Advent candles. Purple symbolizes penance, preparation, and sacrifice. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope. To symbolize our yearning for the promises of God's eternal reign to come into our reality. On the second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. To symbolize our hope for both the peace that will exist throughout creation when we enter into God's reign, but also the inner peace of our own souls when we give ourselves completely over to Christ. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of joy. You'll notice that the joy candle is not purple, but pink. On this Sunday, we take a bit of a break from the Lenten attributes of our journey to celebrate, to rejoice, and give thanks. We're expecting a baby, after all. We have much to be thankful for. Each of our scripture readings today uh, contain messages of joy and gratitude for gifts given and those promised. We'll hear from several different messengers, but all with a common theme. However difficult times may seem, we have much to be thankful for. And among those is the knowledge that God has so much more in store for us if we will just accept the gift that is offered. Let's pray. Long ago, O oh God, your prophets spoke of one who would come to bring salvation to all humankind. We know that promise has been fulfilled. Your kingdom has come near. Throughout our history, you have sent many messengers to share the truth of your kingdom and show us the way there. But time and again, your messengers have been ignored, and humanity has wandered away from the path of your salvation. In grace, O oh Lord, we pray that you would send us as messengers of your way once again to tell all the world of the wonders we've seen, the love we've known, and the grace with which we've all been blessed. May we be your messengers, voices crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. In remembrance of the child born in a stable, we pray the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn today is number 44 from Voices United. It came upon a midnight clear.
Well, hello again. And here we are back in Brother Bear's study. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord of light, as your message is proclaimed to us this day, enlighten us with your wisdom so that we too may be voices in the wilderness declaring your good news to the world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be guided and inspired by you, O Lord, our strength and our hope. Amen. The first of our scripture readings today is from the book of Isaiah, once again. Uh, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, and then we skip ahead a little bit and read 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To provide for those who mourn in Zion. To give them a garland instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. The mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I love, for I the Lord love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations." The psalm reading for today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those in a dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Uh, now we move to the uh, epistle reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets. But hold, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. And he will do this. And finally, we read from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, uh, verse 6 to 8. And then we jump ahead quite a bit and read 19 to 28. So beginning at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Now we skip ahead to verse 19. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they'd been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, 
Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Here ends today's scripture readings. Now, regular followers of my reflections will perhaps be glad to know that this week we do not have any apocalyptic literature. No discussion about the end times or Christ's return. In fact, each of today's scriptures uh, focuses not on what people hope for at some future time, but express joy and gratitude for things that have already taken place. Quite a few years ago, I was given a gift as a token of appreciation from uh, participating in the leadership of an ecumenical men's ministry in my hometown. It's a small plaque, about four inches square, and it bears the first two and a half verses of our scripture reading today. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and in all circumstances, give thanks. Now that was given to me back long before I became a vocational minister. Uh, but that little plaque sits right here on my desk still today. A constant visual reminder of, as the last half of verse 18 tells us, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Those are wonderful words of advice at any time, but perhaps especially appropriate on this Sunday that we light the, Christ, or the candle of joy uh, in the midst of this pandemic. What could be a better expression of a joy-filled life than to rejoice always, pray constantly, and in all circumstances, give thanks? Now, I know there will be some who will argue. Uh, perhaps in this time of pandemic isolation, we find it hard to do these things, particularly rejoicing and giving thanks. Life is hard. We approach Christmas this year almost with a sense of foreboding as we acknowledge that the coronavirus is going to make our usual Christmas celebrations with family and friends unwise, if not even impossible. Even as I write this, I am preparing for a Christmas Eve service that I have no great confidence will be able to take place. It's difficult to be joyful and thankful during these times when it seems there's so little to celebrate. This is largely because we associate joy with happiness, but those two words are not synonymous. Happiness is a, a temporary high that it's almost always dependent on outward circumstances. This Christmas, we might be happy to receive a gift that's just exactly what we wanted. However, by New Year's Day, that happiness will, in many instances, have faded as the Novelty wears off, or we learn that our expectations for this new bauble were unrealistic. Or we probably all remember at least once in our childhood, the new toy gets broken. How easily happiness can turn to sadness uh, or simply indifference. Joy is different though. Joy is an internal sense of contentment that is independent of circumstance. It is perhaps more of a state of mind. Uh, unlike happiness, it cannot be suddenly acquired, nor is it easily taken away. While it may ebb and flow somewhat with life's events, it remains a constant presence as a source of resilience and comfort when the things happen that take away our happiness. Thankfulness is also something that can be always present <laughs> or ever absent, depending on our state of mind. Like joy, thankfulness is something that we must nurture and develop until it becomes a habitual part of who we are. The key to being thankful in all circumstances depends on our focus. Humans have this natural tendency, I think, towards comparison. We compare everything as it is to what it could be or what we would like it to be. Those who are thankful in all circumstances tend to realize that well, it could be a lot worse, even if it isn't quite what we wish it was. For example, we might look at our bank account balance and find it difficult to be thankful and happy because it's not as much as we wish it was. Or we can choose to be joyful and thankful because we know there are people in the world uh, and some not so far away that can scarcely dream of having any money in the bank at all. <laughs> I've been there and perhaps it makes it easier for me to be thankful uh, now knowing that all the bills are paid and there's still a little money left at the end of the month instead of the other way around. 
The prophet in third Isaiah was filled with joy because the spirit of the Lord had come upon him and had sent him out to declare good news for the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the captives and the prisoners. Freedom and justice are being restored. The hopes that they clung to are finally being realized. They'll be sent home to restore their ruined cities and repair all that has been destroyed. The blessings God is about to shower upon them will be seen by all nations, who will then know that these are surely God's own people. Now, our, our psalm was written many years later, but it is a reminder of that great and glorious time when God restored the fortunes of Israel. It reminds them how they were brought up from sorrow to joy. There's great wisdom in that for us today. Like my little plaque on my desk, we, we need reminders. We need to set up reminders of joyful times in which we're grateful for what we received. Now, now this does two things for us. Looking back at those times and events in our lives makes us grateful for the blessings we've already enjoyed. We tend to have long-term memory loss, though, when things are difficult and can only remember the challenges, the setbacks, and sadness. Remembering and celebrating the blessings of the past helps keep our sense of joy and thankfulness in the present. It also reminds us that we've seen difficult times before, and they have not overcome us. The greatest happiness and gratitude are frequently found in triumphing over these challenges. Our Old Testament scriptures are a great example of this. The joy of the harvest is all the sweeter because of the sadness in which the seeds were planted. In our gospel reading, John is also joyous because he has been given the task of sharing good news. He is the voice crying out in the wilderness. And unlike the prophets of old, he has seen the fulfillment of his message. In fact, that fulfillment stands among the crowd gathered around him. I, I sense a little impishness as he tells them that. He, he says to them in a sense, I know something you don't know. <laughs> Where his interrogators question his authority to baptize with water, he, he dismisses their concerns. Why worry about what I do? There is someone right here among you who is going to do so much more and so much better. This is nothing. Just wait till you see what he does. As we struggle through this Christmas season with all of its challenges and disappointments, take time to remember the joy of Christmas's past and give thanks for those. And then make your plans for an even more joyful celebration next year. Instead of grieving what you cannot do this Christmas, rejoice and be grateful for the things that you can and for the assurance that this challenge too will be overcome we heard just this week that uh, the first uh, vaccine has been approved for use uh, in, uh, in Canada. And by this week, some people uh, may already be receiving it. Remember, too, <laughs> what it is that we truly celebrate at this time of year. Perhaps when our usual hustle and bustle of travel and entertaining, family gatherings and holiday parties are set aside, we'll be able to take time to remember what it is that we should truly be grateful for this Christmas and rejoice in the gift that was given so long ago. Paul's words form kind of a, a prophetic snowball. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and in all circumstances give thanks is a formula that, if followed, produces a resilient and sustaining joy that makes it even easier to rejoice always Pray constantly and in all circumstances, give thanks. The more you practice it, the easier it becomes. Eventually, you barely need to think about it. It becomes part of who you are and affects every aspect of your life. And then soon, like Isaiah wrote about the early Israelites, others will see it in you. It's, it's infectious. Your joy brings joy to others, which brings more joy back to you. This is just another gift that the Christ child gives us this Christmas and every day. A joy that is life-giving and life-sustaining. It feeds the spirit and ignites the soul. Let's pray. God of hope and joy, in the spirit of Christmas, we give you thanks 
for the gift of your Son who came to restore our hope and to restore us to you, for the gift of hope that we receive in your eternal promise to love and care for us, for the gifts of past blessings and the memories we have of loved ones who are no longer with us and of joyful, happy times we've had, for even the struggles and challenges we face and the strength and knowledge we gain from living through them, for the presence of your Spirit through which we can come to you, whether in need of strength, comfort, or healing, and or to offer our gratitude for all that you have been and all that you have done. Gentle Spirit, we lay before you now these deepest prayers we bring for ourselves and others, for relief from those things that form a barrier to joyful living, for healing from illness, whether our own or that of people we love, for comfort from grief, for justice wherever the wealthy gain at the expense of the poor, for relief from poverty wherever life's basic needs are beyond the reach of your children. Hear us, O faithful one, as each of us names our specific and new, unique prayers of thankfulness and hope. Creator of all that is and all that will be, we pray for this church, these members of the body of Christ, that our relationship with you may be restored and deepened, that we might rediscover our mission and purpose for your whole, in your holy plan, and that we may find the strength and wisdom to follow your apostles' advice, to rejoice always, pray constantly, and be thankful in all circumstances. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who brings us hope and the promise that all our prayers will be answered according to your divine wisdom and love. Amen. Well, as is fitting for this Sunday that we light the joy candle, our closing hymn today is number 59 from Voices United, Joy to the World. This is the season of gift giving. As disciples of Christ, we offer our gifts to the church, the body of Christ, and to the children of God in need for our, of our outpouring of God's love around the world. Let's pray. Gracious God, teach us to be thankful in all circumstances, for you are always with us. Thank you for the privilege of sharing what we have with others and of receiving gifts that others share with us. In mind, body, and spirit, we rejoice in you, O Lord 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I send you out with the words from 1 Thessalonians. Once again, a reminder, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And as we extinguish our candles once again, I pray that you take with you the gifts of hope, Hope doesn't want to go out. The gift of peace and the gift of joy today and every day. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the eternal presence of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.